This video is on track and sign, learning how to identify tracks and sign in the natural environment with a special emphasis on African wildlife. So what is tracking? Tracking has its origins in hunting and is a process of identifying animals, interpreting their behaviour and following their movements based on the physical evidence left behind by the animals as they go about their daily activities. Tracking is an interpretive exercise that relies on extensive knowledge of the natural environment, careful and astute observation skills, and an active imagination. And that makes it both an art and a science. Evidence of animal activity can include footprints, tracks or spur, claw marks, scuff marks, and drag marks. There might also be physical or chemical traces left by the animal, such as excavations, scratch marks, scent marks, hair, skin or quills, mud rubbings, pawnings, middens, saliva, excretions, pastings, castings or droppings. Traces of feeding activities such as carcasses, bites and little marks, empty shells, partially eaten leaf bases, bulbs, corns and roots, bark and fruit skins all make up physical and chemical traces left by animals. So what are the elements of tracking? Tracking consists of two primary elements track and sign identification, and trailing. Track and sign identification is the starting point of any tracking exercise. It is here where the animal is revealed to the tracker for the first time, that is, unless the tracker has already seen the animal. At this stage, the tracker begins the exercise of identifying and interpreting the tracks and sign left by the wild animal or animals, so as to paint a picture of what happened there and when and who the protagonists were. Here we have a sort of resting patch for a giraffe. During this process of uh, track and sign ID, the tracker may be observing everything around him, including the tiniest detail and from varying angles and perspectives. It is here where the tracker will gather the information needed to further identify the spur left by the animal and to maybe even learn to recognize the individual animal's tracks for later interpretation along the trail. This stage is a very detailed study that can take some time. Here we have a rhino track. Trailing, in tracking and trailing, the are important, but equally important, the gait of the animal can be critical to help with identification or to determine the animal's speed of movement. Here we have several different kinds of trails. On the left hand side, you have the trail of a scrub hare, which is a characteristic uh, four point grouping um, that kind of forms a, a seven or L. Elephant uh, in the middle, you can see the individual elephant tracks moving down the path through the track or dirt track. On the right hand side, you have several tracks. You have porcupine tracks on the right. Far right, um, you have jackal tracks, blackback jackal moving through the middle, um, also towards the top of the screen, and then you have uh, Dickhoff tracks, which is a thick knee bird, um, which has two sets of tracks here moving down um, on the left and in the middle of the, the picture. Every animal has a characteristic spur or track that identifies it both individually and as a specific species, and oftentimes the gender of the animal can de be determined. Just as animals can be classified based on their characteristic features, so can the tracks be classified into various categories. Tracks are classified based on relative size and shape, proportion, presence or absence of claws, nails or webbing, pad and heel imprints, and even shapes and number of toes and the angles of the pads. Substrate can have a profound effect on what is seen and can distort tracks due to displaying of, of hoof or paw in mud or due to melting of snow or ice where a track imprint has been left. Dew claws and nails may become revealed in deeper substrates and tracks may appear larger than they are in reality. Track categories Paws with claws, digitigrade tracks. Um, Digitigrade animals are animals that walk on their tiptoes. Okay, another track category might be paws without claws, hooves even-toed, hooves odd-toed, hand and footprints, very large tracks, serpentine or snake-like tracks, tramline tracks, 
and unusual tracks. These are some of the track categories. Cause with claws. Here you see the imprints of various animals. Um, the tracks all have claw marks in the track and they are also the, the paw mark themselves, paw marks themselves. Um, so you can see the individual pads and the digits. Um, and these are all the Jersey grade. On the left is hyena, on the middle a black back jackal, and on the right a honey badger track. Uh, front foot on the on the top, the back foot, back foot stepping partially on the on the back edge of the, the pad, the front pad. White-tailed mongoose on the left, yeah, with paws with claws. Um, so these also paws with claws, but with narrower digits. Uh, typical of the mongoose family. White-tailed mongoose also the hind track has a very square pad. Um, in the middle you have the narrower toes of water mongoose and then on the right you have a honey badger which is a very foot-like um, pad structure. Paws with claws, animals with paws and claws that are revealed on the track would be spotted hyena, brown hyena, White wolf, cheetah, civet, wild dog, jackal, honey badger, porcupine, white-tailed mongoose, water mongoose, banded mongoose, slender mongoose, dwarf mongoose, tree squirrel, and mirrors or rodents. Paws without claws. Uh, you can see three pictures here. No claws are shown in the tracks unless the substrate is very deep or the animal is sleeping um, or taking off at speed. Here we have a leopard on the left, which is a very round track. We've got serval with teardrop like um, toes or digits, and then there's a lion track on the right hand side. Paws without claws, animals that might have these kinds of tracks would be lion, leopard, caracal, serval, and African wildcats, all of them from the feline family, and then of course the genet as well, which is not a feline mammal. Hand and foot tracks, um, these are tracks that look like a hand or foot imprint. Here you can see the hand and foot tracks of cape clawless otter. Yeah, we also have hand and footprints of baboons. Baboons will typically place their front foot down and the opposite back foot will step right next to the front foot in their normal gait and obviously often obscure the, the thumb of the front foot. So on the left hand picture you can see the left front foot on the left hand side and the right foot stepping over the edge of the thumb on the right hand side of the of the left hand side picture. Hand and foot plantigrade. Examples of hand and foot tracks would be Cape Clawless Otter and monkeys or primates such as Chakmut baboon, Burbit monkey, Sykes or Samango monkeys and then the greater bush baby and lesser bush baby. Unusual tracks would be things like aardvark, spring hare and pangolin. They tend to have uh, three toes in the track. Uh, they don't always show all their toes. Sometimes they show um, all of their toes. It depends on the situation. But here on the left you have an aardvark track with three large toes with the claws showing in the track and with a very blunt large claw showing the track and then two smaller imprints of the toes on the right on, the, on either side of the three big toes. Hooves, even toed. Even toed hooves would be the cloven hoofed animals. Um, they are animals like giraffe, buffalo, eland, kudu, nyala, blue wildebeest, waterbuck, impala, steenbuck, grey dacre, sharps grace book, bush pig and warthog. Four-toed hoofed animals might be hippo. Um, with cloven hoofed animals, there will be toes higher up on the fetlocks, which do not register unless the mud is very deep, in which case sometimes um, it would, would register. For example, the warthog is one example of where that might be the case, or buffalo. Hooves odd-toed, square-lipped or white rhinoceros have um, three hooves, hook-lipped or black rhinoceros have three hooves on each foot. Plain zebra have a single hoof, which is an odd-toed number, with two smaller hooves raised on the fetlocks, and likewise with the cape or hyphens, brown and zebra. So they, they have three toes, but only the hoof 
the central toe will show in the, in the track. Here's an example of the white rhino track. It's moving towards the right. So the, you can see on the right hand side the big main central toe and the two side toes of, of the hooves. Um, and then the back of the pad has an indentation which is quite deep, which is one characteristic of uh, wide, wide lipped or white rhino track. Large tracks, animals with very large tracks would be square lipped or white rhinoceros, hook lipped or black rhinoceros, African elephant, and hippopotamus. They are therefore unmistakable. Here we have an example of a large track, a hippopotamus, with the four toes shown clearly in the right hand side track there. Um, it's moving from right to left in this picture. You can see the four hoofed imprints. Um, it sometimes can be confused, the track can be confused with a rhino track, um, with, and um, especially where the, where the middle two toes kind of fuse in the, in the track imprint. Another example of a large track here, some of my students are standing in a water hole, it's dried out partially. And you can see they are standing in this trench or furrow, which has been created by a large bull elephant walking through the deep, muddy substrate. Um, his immense weight obviously makes him sink very far down. Um, one of my students is standing within, in the footprint of this large male elephant. The male elephants can weigh up to six tons, so that's 6,000 kilograms, six metric tons. Serpentine tracks. Serpentine tracks might include snakes, skinks, and amphibians. Skinks and amphibians do not really have legs, or they have much reduced legs, and they tend to move their body like snakes in a very sinuous or S-like motion. Rectilinear tracks would be tracks of snakes like python and puff adder that move in a straight line, moving essentially by on the peristaltic contractions of their ribs. So the ribs move, contract in sequence like a wave that passes down the body and that moves the animal forward on its ribs. Sidewinder tracks would be horned adder and perine gaze adder tracks. They tend to be snakes that occur in desert sands and sand substrate is very hot so they try to reduce the exposure to the sand so they move in a sinuous motion but they move sideways and they only place a portion of their body on the ground at any point in time so they kind of lift Body as they move along and so you'll have these parallel s-shaped tracks forming with the sidewinders. Here we have a rectilinear track of a puff adder and you can see the tail drag of the animal. This has sometimes been said to be the case for females because they say would have a longer tail but um, jury's out on that. Tram line tracks, leopard tortoise on the left, beetle tracks middle and terrapin tracks or freshwater turtles on the right. Tramline tracks are essentially tracks that form two parallel track sequences um, because of the usually squat nature of the animal um, so it'll, its, it's toes will move on either side in, in a tramline fashion. Examples of animals that have tramline tracks, tortoises, terrapins, marine turtles, millipedes, beetles and arachnids. Sign categories. Sign categories might include holes, burrows, tunnels, and cavities. Nests, which might include scrapes, bowls, woven purses, domes, and platforms. Droppings, urine and middens. Feeding sign, scuffs, claw marks, and scratches. Hornings, pastings, excretions, and secretions. Hair, bone, teeth, and horns, and mud droppings. Here are some examples of other sign. We have a porcupine quill on the top right hand picture. We have frass or uh, sawdust from beetles that are boring, wood borer beetles boring into the um, ruler log there. And then you might also have holes that might be exit holes for wood borer beetles, or they might be holes excavated by woodpeckers or barbets to be used as nesting holes. Here we have launching platforms for alates or winged termites. Um, during the rains they will come out and they will go on their mating flight, launching from these towers. Uh, the sign might include the remains of animals or hair in the droppings of animals. For example, this is the, the 
prey of uh, Promovia bushbuck, of a leopard that was found in the sand forest in Isimangaliso. Here we have uh, hippo, hippo carcass, uh, which is quite far gone. It's obviously a sign of could be a natural death, it could be a predatory attack on an animal. Um, in this case, the animal is actually euthanized because of the drought. There was no, not much grazing left, and the animal had to be euthanized. Other sign might include shells, white parts of animals. So we have a in a clockwise direction from the top left, we have the shell of a giant land snail, Acatina. These can get up to a kilogram in mass. We have um, a terrapin shell, probably, um, yeah, this is a terrapin shell on the, on the right, then a freshwater clam, and, and then finally a leopard tortoise that shot itself on, or was shot to death on an electric fence. Holes, burrows, tunnels, and cavities are another sign. On the top right, you see the burrow of a baboon spider. Um, you can also see circular rings there. Those are those white circular rings. Those are the remains of a millipede that the spider would have fed on. And then the cone-shaped holes are the holes of antlion larvae, which are used for capturing their prey. Here we have various nests and shelters. Um, on the left, a rain spider, Polistes castanea. It's a very, very large spider, the size of a hand, a human hand, and um, it produces this nest and lays its eggs in the nest, and it will guard that. In the middle, a tropical house gecko, which usually lays two eggs, has laid its eggs in a potter wasp nest. Then on the right, uh, you have a sociable spider web. Um, this is Stegodiphus, a sp small spider that occurs communally. There are also um, tropical tent um, caterpillars that, that do a similar thing. This is striped swallow. Um, here we have a mud nest for the lesser striped swallow where it's taken little goblets of or globules of mud or clay and it's formed this long this nest with a long entrance at the bottom of an overhang. This is a foam nest of a foam nest tree frog. It lays its eggs, um, and as the, it's laying the eggs, um, and the male is mating with the eggs, they broth up um, this uh, substance, which makes a kind of, let's say, bubbly nest around the eggs and protects the eggs from desiccation and also from predators. When the tadpoles hatch from the eggs, they will drop down into the water over which the nest has been laid, uh, has been created. Here we have cocktail ants nest. This is called carton. It's a cellulose material that the ants use to build a very large nest. This nest was literally uh, the size of, um, let me think, it was, it was massive. It was, it was the size of a huge pumpkin, literally, um, hanging in the trees. Quite incredible. Here we have droppings, um, urine stains and millens, as sign. Um, this is elephant. You can see the big urine patch. Uh, they can urinate uh, quite a considerable amount of urine per day when they're in mass, up to 400 liters, but usually probably um, 100 to 150 liters per day. Uh, you can see the droppings. At the top end of the urine patch, you can see a kind of um, scrape there. That is the, the trunk sort of resting on the ground or moving on the ground, across the ground. Here we have hippopotamus droppings. The hippo has scattered the droppings with its flap-like tail and uh, the droppings will usually be scattered over a bush like this and it's composed entirely of grass which is what the animal feeds on. So that's a hippo uh, scat marking. Porcupine have lozenge or uh, sausage shaped, shaped uh, droppings with points at either end and they usually have vegetable matter in them, vegetable fibers because they feed on roots and other vegetable matter. Here we have civetrine. Civets have um, these large civetrines which are used to mark their territory. They have the largest anus relative to the size and therefore produces really big droppings and they also have a lot of seeds in their droppings. They are omnivores so they will feed on, on 
seeds, on fruits, on insects, and uh, millipedes will often find a lot of millipedes in their nest, which they love to eat, and then of course any maybe small bones of animals they may, they may have fed on. Here we have a baboon dropping, which is usually very moist, usually placed on, uh, on a rock where they sit sitting, a uh, prominent rock, and it's usually very moist with uh, a mixture of berries and even sometimes insect skeletons. They are, are omnivores as well. Here we have scrub hairs. Um, they produce these dry pellets and they might eat them um, as, a, as a way to, to get more vitamins um, and sort of make maximum use of their, their food. Um, this is digested in the cecum. Here we have the frass or, or sawdust from the wood borer beetle once again. Here we have termites feeding on, uh, wood eating termites feeding on the, on the wood. They make these sort of clay tunnels to protect them from the sun and also to protect them from predators. Once again, the launching platforms of wood eating termites that may have, of termites that would be flying off to, um, to mate during their mating or natural flights. Here we have leopard scat. Leopard scat can be dark if there's a lot of um, blood in the, in the food that they ate. Um, they can be a green color, turning white as they get reached in the sun. They often have hair. They will be um, relatively round, usually with a point at one end. Um, and yeah, and they can be various sizes. Uh, the picture on the right was taken of, of a very large scat collection um, of a large male leopard, also in Isimandaliso in KwaZulu Natal. Here we have a hook clipped rhinoceros or black rhino midden. Um, midden is made up of vegetable matter, because since it is a bit vegetable matter, it is a browser. So it will have sticks and, and parts of leaves, etc. in their droppings. Whereas a white rhino feeds on grass and will have only grass in its droppings. They also bite off twigs at a 45 degree angle with their um, molars. And you can see some of those pieces of twigs are bitten off at a 45 degree angle. Here we have a hyena scat. A hyena eats as scavengers a lot of bone. They have very powerful jaws and can therefore process the bones quite easily. So you'll often find um, in a hyena midden a lot of white uh, scat. Vildebeests have kind of wet uh, scat like this. Um, usually it can be very well formed or it can be quite um, poorly formed because depending on the amount of moisture in the vegetation they're feeding on, it can be confused with uh, bushbuck. Here we have elephant scat again, very large barrel shaped or lozenge shaped uh, droppings. They can produce uh, quite a lot of droppings every day, uh, probably 100 uh, kilograms is possible. Bushpick. Um, this is also quite sloppy. They usually feed on a lot of uh, kinds of vegetable matter, although they are omnivores and it will tend to be fairly foul smelling. It's not as well formed as a uh, wall. Here we have um, feeding marks on bracket fungus from wall. This is a trapdoor spider, open and closed. You can see it makes this little um, silk trapdoor with debris in it. So it waits, and when something approaches, it will flip up the the trapdoor and capture it. Here we have a zebra, zebra scat, which can be similar to warthog, except they have a kidney, sh they have a kidney shape with a central crease in the middle. Also similar, obviously, to other equines like horses. Eggs and egg cases. On the left hand side, we have dung beetle balls, which were excavated and fed on by, the larvae were fed on by honey badger. We have a leopard tortoise egg on the top middle. On the bottom, we have gecko eggs that were laid in a potter wasp nest, and then a praying mantis or a on the right hand side. Then there are remains of the animals, um, usually when they've been killed, um, whether it's either by a, prey, a predator or through a natural death, which is seldom the case. And so yeah, you have a buffalo carcass. 
Um, in the top left here, you have the remains of an impala. It's just the legs, and they've been fed on by dung beetles, which um, in this case are um, detritivores. They're removing them. Um, they're scamming, basically, the dead animal. And then there's a, a hippo carcass there. Uh, you can see the white droppings of um, vultures that have been sitting feeding on the hippo. Um, and there's an old um, sort of uh, spinal column of a hippo there. This hippo was actually euthanized and then brought to this area uh, because of a drought. Other remains might include skulls. Um, in the top left picture, you have skulls of elephants in the background with a hippo skull in the foreground. And you can see the large tusks of the hippo. And then on the bottom picture, on the right, you can see two rhino skulls and an elephant skull. So that gives you an idea. Notice in the elephant skull, you can see what looks like two rows of teeth. Those are actually only two teeth. The elephants have four teeth in their mouth at one time, two in the upper jaw and two in the lower jaw. Um, and then they have the, the two tusks. The tusks grow indefinitely. The teeth are replaced six times in their life, the molar teeth. Here we have an elephant again, um, elephant remains. Notice the honeycomb skull, which helps to cool the, the immense animal um, down. Here are some other remains of an elephant carcass. You can see all the large bones that make up the upper humerus of the elephant, um, the hip bones, etc., ribs, etc. Horn borer moths. Um, the larvae of these moths feed on the keratin of horns. It's nature's way of getting rid of even the, the horns of animals. Um, Serratophaga vastella is their name. And once they've finished feeding, they'll produce these. Um, sort of hard towers and then emerges as an adult moth. Yeah, we have a gentleman showing the rubbing mark of an elephant on a tree in KwaZulu Natal um, and they'll rub against it, the large bull elephant is rubbed against the tree yeah, to rub some mud off. On the right hand picture, this is another mud rubbing of a rhino. Uh, black rhino, I believe, and it's scraped off a tick, um, which is shown there embedded in the mud. It's one of their ways of removing ticks. Here you have hair from lions that were fighting, and they bumped against one of the game drive vehicles. So there's another example of a sign that you might find. This is um, a rodent that has been captured and uh, basically beheaded by. Um, Prey animal. It could have been some kind of bird of prey uh, or some other animal that's, that's consumed this animal. Not really certain what it was, it was difficult to tell. There you see it again, uh, the headless rodent.